Hey, what's up, what's up? Joe in Vegas back uh, with another review. Blink-182 at T-Mobile Arena. So, this is an interesting one for me. If you would have told me 20 years ago that I would be into and actually enjoy the music of Blink-182, I would have said you're crazy. For me, they were the poster child for... Kind of like the death of the rock and roll era that I grew up with, that 80s rock. Uh, you know, it died, it went into grunge, and then it kind of, when grunge died, this is what emerged. And I was okay with grunge. Per- this is personal. I know people are already pissed off at me. This is my personal opinion. This is my personal experience. It doesn't have anything to do with you. I'm just talking. Um, the 80s hair metal and the 80s rock went into grunge, but grunge was still good and dark, and I was fine with that. Uh, but then this, I used, Blink was like the poster child for this whiny kind of rock that at the time when it came out, and I remember it very clearly, I did not like it. I used to, re, I used to I remember complaining to my friends and be like, why does this shit sound so whiny? Just like a bunch of guys whining. And I think, let's see, I think I was, I know I was wrong at the time. I don't think I ever gave them a fair chance at that time. I think I was butthurt that Guns N' Roses and, and those bands weren't at the, at their peak anymore. And it was replaced with this stuff. And I think I would listen to it for two seconds and turn it off and be like, no, that's not fucking Axl Rose. That's not Sebastian Bach. That's not, you know, the guys I grew up with. This is whiny fucking crap. And I did not give it a chance. And it was like that for many years for me. And then about, I think it was pre-COVID. It must have been pre-COVID. Yeah, it definitely was pre-COVID. They had a residency here. Blink-182 had a residency at the Palms where they played a bunch of shows. And I went to one and I gave them a fair... And I knew the songs. I knew the songs, but again, never gave it a fair shot. I just knew the songs from, from pop culture and stuff like that. And I remember going to the show and I gave it a complete open mind and I loved it. And I went back to another one and I fucking loved it and i think it was a time where rock as a whole whether it was 80s rock or 90s rock or 2000 rock or whiny rock it was just going away and it was so nice to hear blink 182 and green day and live live so when they started playing these shows i kept going to it and i and i i don't say fell in love that's the wrong way to put it but i i got it I got it. It clicked. I don't know why it took 20 years to click, but it clicked. And I understood it. And and I knew right away I was wrong from how I treated, not how I treated them, but how I looked at Blink-182 back in the day. And I became a fan very late in life. And I've always said this about music. That's the beauty of music. Beatles came out in the 60s. You can become a fan in 2024. You can become a fan. I can become a fan of of. Kanye West in 10 years from now, once music is released into the world, there is no expiration date on it. You can fall in love or you can you can love a band or discover a band at any time. You can wake up tomorrow and say, what? Why was everybody so into Bob Dylan? Because I did that when I was 18. And, and go back and start listening to Bob Dylan and be like, you know what? I get it. Beauty of music. So for me, Blink-182, I know I'm already three minutes in. I haven't even talked to this show. But that's my personal background. And I think it might be similar for a lot of people, at least people from my era. It took me a while to get it, but I got it. And and it took those seeing them live to do it. So when they came back around, I haven't seen them in a few years. I was very excited to see them. Um, all right, let's get into the show. Let's get into the set list. Let's get into all the good stuff. So I have some, I have some, some words. So I, I have to break this show into two things, the music and the production and the stage. From a music standpoint, I thought they were excellent. They looked great. Tom is back with the band. It's the original lineup. They look great. They sounded great. They, 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 they sprinkled. They had a big set list. I'll go through it in a minute. And then I'll come, and come back and talk about the other part that bothered me, which was the production. Not that the music bothered me. The music was fine. Uh, they started with Feeling This. They, they went into Rock Show, one of their big hits right out of the gate. Man Overboard. I mean, Feeling This also was a big hit. But the Rock Show... Uh, Man Overboard, Aliens Exist, Dance With Me, Easy Target, Bored to Death, Edging, Up All Night, More Than You Know, Great Set List, Wendy Clear, Stay Together for the Kids, Not Now, Can't Go Back, which they said was a new song, I don't think they said they didn't even mix it yet, I Miss You, which is one of my favorite songs by them, just a dark, beautiful ballad, Um, Down, Great, 
when your heart stops beating there is fuckface anthem part three always and then they go into their big 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 ones what's my age again first date all the small things damn it and then they did they didn't really do an encore they just kind of joked around and said okay here's the encore and they just played uh, one more time which i think is their new one from their new album which is great it's a great song musically it was fantastic it, it, they give you everything you want um and more like i said they sounded great they looked great there was a lot of banter in between them that at times i don't want to say it's childish it just felt like they haven't matured in all these years which i think is what people still like about them. it didn't bother me but it was like it was weird that some of the stuff they were saying to each other in between i didn't i don't think you needed that personally but it didn't didn't take away from much um, one of the songs, I think it was All the Small Things. In the middle of it, he started, was it All the Small Things or What's My Age Again? One of them. Maybe his first day. I don't know. One of the big hits. In the middle, he busted into Baby Shark for like a minute. I don't, I don't know why. I know they're dads now, I'm sure, and they have kids and families, but I thought that was a little weird to do during one of your bigger hits. That annoyed me. But other than that, it, I thought from a, from a set list standpoint, from a song standpoint, from a quality standpoint, great. Now, here's my problem with the show. The stage was shit. Shit. If I had to judge the production on a scale of 1 to 10, I would give it 2 for a th- several different reasons. Number one, it was a round stage. You know, you're in an arena. You don't need to do a round stage. But if you're going to do a round stage, then do it in the fucking middle. Don't do it on the side. So it was set up like a regular stage where 75 70% of the of the arena were facing them and there was 30 percent behind them but they put the round stage there then they did something that the last guy i remember who did it i really didn't like it either was ed sheeran where the stage kind of rotate rotates around and i know why they do it because they feel that everybody in the, in the arena should have a chance to see them you know seeing them facing them again that's understandable when the stage is in the middle but the stage was not in the middle it was on the side so there was a good 60% of the audience that was looking at their back for many, many, many songs of the show. I was, and I, I don't like that. When you buy tickets, like I was looking at ticket prices, and by the way, in case I forget, I paid $200 a ticket. I got them direct from Access. I was in Section 6, which is in the Ghost Lounge, Great Seats T-Mobile, Dead Center, and I bought those tickets, and I got them direct. Yeah, I didn't get them on StubHub. I got them there a couple days before. Um And they did sell out that place, which I was impressed. They sold out T-Mobile. I bought those seats, and people pay money for seats thinking that they will be have better seats and close to the front. That's what you pay more for. The seats behind the stage, I look today, were selling for 40, 50 bucks because you say, okay, I'm going to pay 40, 50 bucks, but I know I'm going to be staring at their back, but that's all I can afford, and that's fine. You shouldn't feel that you got gypped because now the screen is rotating and someone paid two, three, four, five hundred dollars for four seats and you're staring at their back. I don't agree with that. I don't think that's right to do because you want to appease the people who paid uh, behind the stage. I, I, I think those people knew when they signed up what they were getting for. And I don't think it's right to screw people who are paying for front row seats to be looking at your back for half the show. So... That's the biggest gripe. The other gripe I had was it was very dark. The lighting was incredibly dark. And speaking of lighting, they had this really shitty fucking rig where these lights would come down. I was in section six. I was in the lower bowl. And when these lights came down the sides, I'll, tr- I'll try to post a picture. I know I took one or two of them. When these lights would come down on the side, I can barely see the band and I'm in the upper bowl. Plus, as a whole, the monitors were very low. Anybody up in the 200 sections, and if anybody was there and was up in the upper level, please comment because I'm curious. I don't think those people, I think those, those views were blocked just from the screens. And when those light rigs came down, I think you were completely, you couldn't see the band at all. So the lighting was blocking. Their backs were turned to you for a lot of the show. And it was very darkly lit. There was a lot of smoke. It was hard to see them. And that's usually a tactic that's done by bands that look old. and They don't want people to see it. They look great, these guys. They look great. I don't know why they're hiding in such dark lighting. I don't get it. Maybe it's something they've always done. I don't remember that from the the residencies. But it took away. When when I have to stare at a back or three backs for four or five songs in a row and then stare at their side of their faces for two or three more songs, you disconnect. You disconnect. I'm all about connecting with the band. And when every time, every three songs, I'm looking at their back, I'm looking at their front, I'm looking at their sides. 
it bothered me. It threw me off a little bit. It took away from great music and great set lists, which which I don't like. So go see him. It's still a great show. Scale of 1 to 10, I'm still going to give him an 8, 7. But I think it would have been probably 9s if they just had a regular, a regular uh, what's it called? A regular stage and production. I don't know why they did that. I don't know what they were thinking. Especially when those lights came down. It really blocked the block the view and, and again i was in good seats i can't even imagine if you were up top so anyway that's my bitching that's it's still a great show i still really love the band this music has aged very well for me um but be prepared if you're in an upper level but it does benefit if you're hearing this review and you can't really afford good seats you're better off sitting behind the stage that axis or Ticketmaster has as limited view because they're going to be facing you. It's better than being all the way on the other side of the arena and up top thinking you're going to be staring at their fronts. So that's my review. I appreciate you listening. Subscribe, comment if you were there. Help me build this channel. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. I appreciate it. I will see you at the next show. Uh, it's a hot weekend here in Vegas. I don't know what. They're supposed to hit one fucking 20 for like two days. So I have tickets for a very special night for me. On Saturday night, it's going to be the last Beatles love show ever, which is hands down my favorite show on the Strip. So uh, I'm going to have a nice probably review for that. I don't know what I'm doing in between, but stay tuned. Subscribe so you find out what's coming next. I appreciate it, and I will see you at the next show. Bye-bye.